Hello, and thank you for joining me for Bootbit Swiss Army Tool of Observability and Gesture. My name is Michael Marshall, and I am a senior SRE with Neiman Marcus. I'm also an avid cloud architect and developer. Before I begin this talk, I would like to do a shout out and thank you to my management team who sponsored the project. Alec Nelson and Santosh Modhaker. During the talk, I will cover Fluentbit, what it is, why I'm so excited, how I added log derived metrics functionality, how I use it as my Swiss Army tool, and then I'll let you see it in action. So I came across a challenge. After building out my data observability platform with Grafana Loki logs, with Prometheus and Cortex metrics using Grafana UI for dashboarding and ad hoc queries, I set out to find the best tool to use to ingest the data into the platform. It needed to be low complexity and it needed to be inexpensive. What is it? Fluentbit. By definition, a log processor and a forwarder. It's a pipeline made up of plugins for extreme agility, flexibility. A few of those I've listed here to ingest, to massage, to extract or drop records, as you can see in the diagram below. And it's the best thing since sliced bread. So why am I so excited about it? It's fast. It's developed in C. It's developed to run in an embedded system environment. It's open source. You can look at C, how it runs, and contribute to it. It's container friendly. It runs great inside of a container. I run it on Fargate. It's tiny. It's very low resource usage, along with being fast and container. It's very cost effective. I can run multiple instances of Fluentbit, each doing its own thing without impacting any of the others at a, at a very reasonable cost. It has wide cloud provider adoption. I first came across it when using AWS and I came across FireLens. FireLens is a sidecar implementation of Fluentbit that runs in Fargate for sending logs to directly to FluentD or in this case, Fluentbit, uh, bypassing uh, the need to send it to CloudMesh logs. I also discovered that Google Cloud has standardized on Fluentbit for its uh, logging infrastructure. Fluentbit is extremely agile and flexible, which is what makes it so attractive. It has a very active community for its open source project. It makes releases often and always welcomes additional contribution. And it's extremely extensible as I will show later in my talk. So checking the boxes. It checks the box for speed, agility, and cost. But it was missing a critical uh, function that I needed. I needed to be able to derive metrics from my logs and send them to Prometheus. So what do you do now? Well, if it doesn't exist, create it, says Henry Royce. So I did. This is how I added log derived metrics to Prometheus, I mean, to Fluentbit. I used the Golang, uh, uh, plug, uh, Golang SDK and I built output Prometheus metrics plugin. This is the plugin architecture that I used. I route logs through Fluentbit using the tagging. 
then I route them to the output module, the Prometheus metrics output module. I define the count, the, the metric type, the metric name, the job name, and, and then I push that information to Prometheus push gateway. Prometheus then comes and scrapes the Prometheus push gateway uh, when it's configured to do so. Now, I wanted to address a couple of questions. Why go away? Fluentbit is written in C. You can do native C plugins as well. I used Golang because Prometheus gate, Push Gateway and Prometheus are both written in Golang and made the handoff easier. Now, anybody that's run Prometheus knows that Push Gateway is frowned upon. I decided to use it so that I didn't impact the type speed at which Fluentbit is running. And instead of holding the metrics waiting to be scraped, I chose to push them to push gateway as a fire and forget, and then allow Prometheus to come pick them up. Uh, this model works very well. This is a sample configuration section for my plugin. What I wanted to do here was create a metric, a counter metric to count the number of CloudWatch log records processed by this instance of Fluentbit and index them <clears throat> as the log group name and the source database account. So the first few here are standard output parameters, the name of the, of, of the plugin, the tag you're matching on, the log level. And then we have the job. The job is a Prometheus job label that will show up when you do queries. The URL shows where to push the metrics, where the push gateway is. I have the metric type at this point at counter, the metric name following Prometheus naming convention. And then I have the metric constant labels and variable labels. I want to explain the difference between these. Constant labels are set static in the config file at the time you configure fluent bit. The variable labels are extracted using regex from configuration up above, for, uh, further up in the pipeline. This is the true key to this plugin. I can then create truly log derived metrics from the log lines passing through the pipeline. The ID allows me to have multiple uh, copies of the Prometheus metric plugin in use <clears throat> within a single fluentbit.conf instance. They must be different. Now I'm gonna go over a few of my go-to plugins that I use uh, quite a bit for my production installation. <clears throat> An input plugin is how you get data into Fluent bit. I have a couple of external feeds coming in from uh, upstream vendors. One of them is syslog based, and the other is a stream of raw JSON. So I'm using the TCP input for the raw JSON and the syslog input for syslog. My on stream data is being, uh, I'm using the tail input to tail logs on application servers. There is an, a special input plugin, which is also an output plugin called forward. This defines the forwarding uh, protocol in use between FluentD and FluentBit or FluentBit and FluentBit. It's for passing records between instances. I leverage this by using TLS and uh, pushing my on-premise logs to my cloud-based foot bit. I also use it for multi-region, passing data between regions. There's a second use, which I've leveraged, and I'll be demonstrating later in this talk, is the programmatic input used 
uh, using the uh, SDK that I've listed here. But basically, it takes the logs that you want to push to FluentBit and packages them into the forward protocol and assigns a tag and pushes it into FluentBit. These are the parser plugins that I use quite often. Uh, JSON, so you can pass it a JSON string and it'll return the set of key value pairs. And regex. Regex uses Ruby regex to extract content using named captures. You'll notice that I'm using the extracted fields later in the demo in my output plugin. The filter plugins that I use quite often is grep, mainly for discarding records that I don't want ingested into my system. And the modify, which I commonly use to drop keys prior to ingestion. There's an additional one for tag manipulation called rewrite tag. Now tagging in FluentBit is, is the, one of the key uh, uses for, for the system. You can reroute records through the pipeline uh, just by changing the tags. Or you can split the record uh, by using rules, uh, assign a new tag, and when you re-emit the tag, it will restart at the beginning of the pipeline. Uh, you can do this, this allows you to do many different things uh, at flexibility. Now these are my most used filter plugins. The parser using regex, and then there's Lua. Lua in FluentBit was a game changer. There are many built-in plugins in FluentBit, but when you face a situation where you, you just don't find support, write a Lua function uh, and you're golden. It, uh, is, it runs very fast and it's well integrated into the product. Here's a few tips and tricks. I like to say, if I can see it, I can troubleshoot it. In this case, uh, I'm creating a T for the pipeline. You can add a Lua filter between pipeline sections, write a function in Lua that will dump the current table to standard out. This will display all the tags and keys uh, in play as uh, that goes through that T. Now, this is very helpful for just getting a good feel for what's going on. Uh, the second tip is basically for when you're looking at examples of configurations that people have posted and documentation, uh, you'll see fields in play that you don't see a definition for and, and therefore they don't make sense. Um, having been bit by this several times, I will tell you to check the parsers.com file uh, where you'll probably find the definition. Let's see it in action. During this demo, I'm gonna show you a set of configurations for my internal programmatic uh, fluent forwarding. In production, this is implemented as a serverless project. I'm doing a Lambda, subscribing to a log group and pushing, uh, the Lambda gets fired every time a log group receives a record. And the Lambda takes it, puts it into an SQS queue. On the other end, I have a Lambda routing, uh, a Flint router that takes the message, decrypts it, and uh, puts it into fluid forwarding protocol and pushes it to Loki and Prometheus uh, as configured. I will show you what it looks like in Grafana UI.
This is the fluent bit comp file, comp file that I'm using for my FlyWatch log. Each of these sections is, is basically a part of the pipeline. In this case, it starts with forward. The forward is receiving the logs from the Lambda, which is calling that SDK that, that I showed you, um, and receives them on port 24224. Notice there's no tag matching here. In forward inputs, you always tag the messages prior to pushing them to the forward. Now I know that they're tagged with CW logs, CloudWatch logs. So the first part of my pipeline is a parser. And it, I'm gonna push the tag and I'm going to decrypt it with a regex called CW tag. What I'm doing is when I send this data, I am adding the cloud, uh, the log group, CloudWatch log group and the source account to the tag. And then I decrypt it and use it in fluent bit. You can see those names there. Those are the extracted labels. The next phase is the, is the parser. On the record, I'm going to search for nested JSON. If I find nested JSON, I'm going to return it as a named field called nested JSON along with pre and post data. I'll show you that in a moment. And then after that, I'm going to clean up the nested JSON because it includes backslashes and uh, non uh, I'm sorry, non JSON compliant formatting. So I'm going to fix that using Lua. Here's my nested JSON parser. You see here, I'm capturing the nested JSON into a field name, nested JSON, and the post and prefix data. This is the Lua, I'm calling a function. It passes in the record. The record looks for the nested JSON key, runs through, cleans up the JSON formatting and reassigns it to the record. Code one says change it when it comes back and code zero says ignore it. You'll see here the commented out section that I mentioned for diagnostics. Uh, that would be helpful to dump the pipeline that's flowing through at this time. The next uh, parser decodes the nested JSON that's cleaned up using a built-in decode field that's built into fluent bit. I'm passing it a string called nested JSON and telling it it's in JSON format and it returns the key value pairs. Next one, I'm using the filter modify, I dropping option and tag uh, keys. And then I get to the output section. One way I'm sending it the low key, sending the raw logs to low key. I'm sending static labels as set here. And these are my dynamic labels, which I derived from uh, using the reg axis from above. The output here, I'm using the Prometheus metric plugin and setting the job to CloudWatch logs pushing it to my push gateway. If I encounter a metric, these are my static labels. And again, these are my dynamic log derived metrics. I'm gonna quickly show you what it looks like in Grafana. This is a ad hoc query looking for CloudWatch logs. There's only one log being pushed in at the moment. This is what it looks like. 
This is a dashboard I put together real quick. Uh, this is showing the rate of change. And this is showing the actual counter. The counter is always increasing. The rate of change will increase and, and decrease as the rate of uh, quantity shows up over a period of time. A higher quantity can indicate a possible issue in your network. And then these are the raw log. And one last thing I wanted to point out was what it looks like in push gateway. So I'm doing the CloudWatch logs. I have one log record at this time. And you'll see the counter and you'll see what it's indexed by. This down here is also a syslog job that's running and it has all the different combinations with status logs countered and more. You could update it. And these, this is being scraped by Prometheus. As far as lessons learned, I would say provision a new instance for each endpoint, they're cheap. Um, also, if you need a new feature, add it. There's plenty of SDKs and examples of how to do that. Uh, the tagging and tag manipulation is one of the keys to fluent bit agility. And Lauren Lua, we'll thank you later. Thank you for joining my talk. I hope you enjoyed it.